Essendon have not won a final since 2004. It has been over 3,000 days, and I was five years old at the time. I am now 25, and they've still not won a final since then. In that period of time, I have started school, finished school, met my wife, gotten married, moved into state, moved out of home, made a YouTube channel, and Essendon can't win a final. What are they doing? Today we're going to try and fix that. We're not only going to win a final, but we're also going to get them out of mediocrity and get them a premiership. Their first one since 2000. They, they've been the pinnacle of mediocrity since... Since they... Since 2004! That's almost my entire lifetime! Oh, my lord, there's, there's a lot to get through today. Hello everybody, Cooper here, and welcome back to another AFL rebuild here on AFL 23. We're going to be going through every team until we win a premiership with every single club. We've done the Gold Coast, we've, jumped, we've done GWS, we now move on to the Bombers, which was a viewer request by one of you lot. So, thank you, I, I apologise, I can't remember who it was that exactly requested it. But if you want to see your club done at some point in the future, do leave a comment and whichever comment is the most popular, I will do that rebuild at some point in the future. I will do all the clubs eventually, um, but we're doing Essendon today. Um, but I've got a few things that I want to get through uh, in this sort of early portion of the video. I basically, I, there's the hit list of guys I want to target and there's the word that rhymes with hit put an S in the front list uh, of players I want to get rid of. Um, a few of those players, sort of your older players that I don't really know what they're still doing at the club. So, you know, your who's a good example? I don't really rate Zach Merritt all that highly. Now, he's probably a little bit too, too in his prime to get rid of just yet. But there are some players who are sort of edging towards the other side of their careers that we could probably get rid of, like your Dyson Heppels, your Jakey Stringers. Mason Redman is quite good. I do quite like Mason Redman. He was very close to joining the Crows, but he did sign a new contract. He is a free agent in-game, so we'll be looking to bring him back. Um, but there are a few players that we will be moving on. We're also going to be promoting a lot within the youth um, and recruiting very heavily to try and get us a finals win at some point. We, we are dying for a finals win. I cannot emphasize that enough. I don't think we'll make uh, the finals in this first season. Um, and at the halfway point of the first season, we'll go over our watch list. We'll see who else we can get that I'd be looking to bring into the club. Um, there's a lot of work for us to do to get this team into premiership contention. Um, but before we do anything, we will do the preseason and uh, we'll get into round one as well. We'll have a quick look at our lineup. Um, for the most part, I'm, I'm okay with where it's at at the moment. There's a lot of work to be done, as I said. Uh, Dylan Shields, another name that I forgot to mention before, of players that I want to get rid of. Um, he's just not been the same player since he moved over from uh, GWS, so he'll be on the way out fairly soon. But I'm going to play around with this lineup, uh, figure out who I want to prioritize game time to, and then we'll pick a lineup that uh, I like for the first season. Okay, I've put the team together. There's not a great deal of changes that I really, really wanted to do. Um, there's not really a lot that can be done about this list, I will be honest. Um, but a, a few players that I have brought in is Elijah Sardis. Uh, he's got the famous number five got drafted in the 2022 draft fairly highly. He's got decent potential. Um, I will be re-signing him at the end of the season. I believe his contract is expiring at the end of the first season. So we will be looking to bring him back. And we've also got Lewis Hayes, who um, I have put on backup ruck duties, um, but looks to be a really nice sort of key defending prospect as well. 199 centimeters. Um, we'll be looking to bring him into the fold. Uh, at the points during the season, but he's going to start off as our sub. Um, but that is basically all that I've, as I said, all that I've changed uh, going into this first season. We'll confirm the lineup 
We'll see how we go against Geelong. I don't really expect a great deal out of this result. We go down by 10, so I'm not too worried about that, I will be honest. Um, we've got round one against Hawthorne, a great rivalry, a very historic rivalry uh, with the Hawks. So uh, I know there was the, obviously the um, line in the sand match in 2000. I think that might have also been in 2004, where uh, that was you know quite a big, <laughs> big thing that happened between the two clubs. And then there's I think in 2009, which was uh, Matthew Lloyd's final game where he. <laughs> He just shirt fronted Brad Sewell and that was a big uh, big deal that happened. Uh, no injuries again, which is good. And then there's also the rivalry in the, the 70s and 80s, which was, which was really, really good as well between the two clubs. But we'll see how we go in round one. Um, we've probably got the better team, I would say. Um, but hopefully we can get the win. We do win by four points. Seven goals to four in the final quarter gets it done. I'm very happy with the result. Uh, hopefully this will be a sign of things to come as we uh, move towards the mid-season draft. I will see you guys very shortly. Okay, we are back for the mid-season draft. This is the current ladder that we've got here. We are in 11th, 11 games played, five wins, six losses. We were four wins and one loss at one point in time. We've lost uh, six, sorry, we've lost five of our last six. So we're not in the best of form. Um, but we seem to be only winning by a little bit and then we get absolutely smashed. So we're not really winning lots of big games, which is a little bit unfortunate. If we look at the goal kicking, we see that Darcy Parrish and uh, Gilfie are leading the goal kicking at the moment. They've got 12 goals apiece. Dylan Shields got 11. Hunter's got 10, as does Weedman. Uh, Owen Davy Jr.'s got 7, as does Langford and Wright. In terms of the ball winners, that goes to Merritt, Parrish and Dylan Shield. Marks is Dylan Shield. Tackles is also Dylan Shield. So Dylan Shield's actually doing not too badly in terms of putting up decent stats, but we still will be looking to move on from him next season. Clearances is also Dylan Shield. And hitouts, we've had a bit of a shift around with the ruck. Um, so Phillips has been leading the way with the hitouts. Uh, Sam, is it Sam Draper? I think it is Sam Draper. He's got 39 hitouts. McBride's also got 33 to his name. In terms of goal kicking accuracy, we've been pretty solid. Not too bad in terms of goal kicking accuracy. We've kicked more goals than points, which is the main thing. Um, but I've been pretty, pretty content with how we've been kicking in terms of accuracy, which has been good. In terms of score assist, Darcy Parrish is leading the way with 12. Will Snelling is not far behind on 10. That now brings us to the mid-season draft. We don't have any players to be selected. Um, we don't have a pick, I should say, is what I'm trying to say. So nothing to do. Uh, here, Sydney Snack goes first to Carlton. Oscar McDonald to Fremantle. Sam Hayes, sorry, Sam Mays goes to the Western Bulldogs. Ben Ronke goes to GWS, and Braden Ham uh, goes fifth overall to St Kilda. Okay, our next match is up against North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Hopefully, we can get a win here. North Melbourne are actually doing very well. They're currently sitting in seventh. So let's uh, put a team together. We can see that Snelling's currently injured. We'll bring in uh, Tip and Woody, McDonald, Tip and Woody. Um, I know that Sartis is currently injured, which uh, actually, no, he's back now. So I think he, he was out with an AC joint at some point. We'll take Setterfield out. Uh, Lewis Hayes has been getting some game time at fullback. So uh, I know we had an injury back there. I don't remember who uh, the fullback would be if he's still out. Might be James Stewart. That is our, actually no, it's Laverde, um, who's the fullback. So he's currently out. So we can confirm this lineup, and hopefully we can get a win over North Melbourne, which we do. Thirty-nine point winners, seven goals in the last quarter to really boost that lead. Very happy with our work. Phillips kicks three. Zach Merritt gets fifty-nine touches. Very very happy days. I will be back with the end of the season. Hopefully we can make finals and try and get that first finals win in a very long time. Okay, the season is done. We finish uh, in the top eight, which is great. We're going to be playing finals. We've got St. Kilda away from home in the first final. We do have quite a bad percentage, only 91%, even though we did win three more games than we lost. Um, but Port finished top, Melbourne second, Geelong third, Richmond fourth. Carlton finished bottom 
which is quite surprising. So we might be able to take a few of their talented players over to our side of town. Uh, that might be a little something, something to keep an eye on for later. Um, but we'll have a look at who uh, we've got in the finals. So that would be St Kilda. We'll do that first match now and we'll do statistics uh, once the final series is over. I doubt we will win a premiership this year. If we do, uh, we'll just do another season and then we'll go from there. So we'll bring in Will Snelling for Setterfield and Jaden Hunter can come out for Nick. Is it Nick Cox? Is that... I'm not familiar with Essendon. Yes, it is Nick Cox. We'll do that. So we'll confirm that team. Elimination final, MCG. Let's see how we go. We've won a final in the first year. The curse is over. Essendon are capable of winning finals. Unbelievable. Okay, we've ticked that little box for this year. We can move on to something greater next year. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully we can do something this year. But if we don't, we've got something to bounce off of for next year, which is great. Okay, we've got Geelong at the MCG away from home. Uh, I don't know why Geelong's hosting a home game at the MCG. It's a bit strange, but... Anyway, Nick Hind is injured. I'm gonna bring in Alastair Lord. He's gonna play in the back pocket for us. We have had a little bit of issues with injury so far this year, um, but hopefully it won't affect us too much in this finals match. We win. We are preliminary final bound. We almost blew it in the last quarter, but we've done very well. Two meter Peter kicks four, and we are, as I said, prelim. Preliminary final bound. We now have Port at the Adelaide Oval, who did finish top. And they probably are the better side on paper. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, how we go in a prelim final. Uh, let's, let's have a look. Uh, Lord is now injured, the guy who we just brought in. The one thing I have noticed with uh, Essendon's list is they have way too many Fords. Uh, so, or at least Fords, um, players that are considered Fords in the game. So whether or not they're actually forwards in real life or not, I, I don't really pay that much attention to Essendon, so I don't really know. Um, oh, my cat has just bumped my microphone, so hopefully that didn't create too much noise. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the team that we've put together. My cat is now, he's settled on my lap. He's been getting very close to the microphone, so I'm just gonna move that away for now. But I like the team. Hopefully we can get something decent with a win over uh, Port Adelaide, a, a win, a, what am I trying to say, a grand final win in the first season would be huge. I doubt we're going to win this game. We lose by eight points. I'm not necessarily disappointed about that because it gives us something to aim for next season. So had we made the grand final, you know, our goal would have been to make the grand final again next year. And I don't necessarily think that's a realistic outcome, but we've gotten to a prelim final uh, after finishing in seventh. Um, so we can probably reset our expectations now to aim for a top eight finish. Because I feel like this is definitely ahead of schedule for Essendon. Um, so we're gonna be aiming for a top eight finish uh, going into next season. But it's time to go over the off season. Port Adelaide do eventually win the premiership. They defeat Melbourne in the grand final. Uh, Melbourne had Richmond in the other prelim, but this is how the finals bracket played out in the end. Very happy with our season. Uh, a little bit unexpected, but you know, not can't complain about it too much. In terms of statistics, it was Darcy Parrish that led the way uh, in basically every category. So he is a free agent. We're gonna be trying to bring him back on a somewhat affordable contract. Uh, he kicked 35 goals, led the goal kicking, uh, was just about our top disposal getter. I think he's behind Merritt and Shield, unfortunately, but that is still outstanding work. He's up there in the marks. Tackles, I think he's led the tackles as well. Clearances. Uh, he didn't get as many clearances as some of our other guys, but he has done fantastic work, fantastic work this year, if I can get my words out. Um, but Weedman kicked 26, as did Merritt and Shield. Hobbs was good, Wright was good, uh, Tip and Woody was good, Langford was also pretty good. Uh, Sardis, we should probably highlight him a little bit. He was not too bad in his first year, got a little bit of the ball, kicked 12 goals off the wing, so pretty happy with, with his output as well. And I can't remember the other youngster that we brought into the side. I'll know his name once I see it. Hayes. He only played the seven games um, and then he got injured. So I don't, I don't think I brought him back into the side after that. So, um, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with how the team went. 
we look at the Brownlow medal winners, we can see that Dion Prestia was the Brownlow medalist for this season. Uh, Zach Merritt ended up finishing in fifth, so very happy uh, with his output. Um, I think, I don't know how old Zach Merritt is. He's 27, so we might, he's a bit younger than I thought he was. I, I know I said I was going to move on from him, but we might actually keep him around if he's still contracted, that is. In terms of the Coleman, looks like Luke Parker won that uh, from Sydney, which is a bit funny, but uh, Lockie Hunter was in the top two. Uh, Cam Rayner finished in third. I don't see any bombers, um, which is unfortunate, but that is okay. Rising Star went to Barnett from West Coast. And Jackson Arch is up there as well. No bombers though. All Australian team. Hunter finished as an All Australian, as did Zach Merritt. And that is Jack. That is it for bombers players. Free agency period is now here. Now in real life, the bombers did sign a big name free agent in Ben Mackay, uh, related to Harry Mackay. Uh, we are going to go to uh, the free agents, and I'm going to put together a little short list very quickly of guys that I want to bring into the club. Okay, this is the short list of players that I have put together for uh, this upcoming free agency. Uh, there's a variety of different players uh, for a variety of different roles. Matt Crouch is going to be uh, someone that we want to bring in uh, probably on a shorter term contract. He is 28 years old. He's sort of out of favor with the Crows in real life, but he did sign a contract extension. Um, but it is someone that we're sort of looking to to sort of bring into the team on maybe a cheaper deal, uh, depending on how much he's asking for. Uh, Harry Hummelberg, another key defender. In and out of positions with the Giants, he spent some time up forward, he spent some time down back. I don't really know what his best position is, but we can probably figure that out down the line. He could be a mentor to Lewis Hayes, maybe, uh, alongside Ben Mackay, who did join the Bombers in real life. He'll be looking, we're definitely going to try and bring him in. Um, probably not give him as much money as the Bombers did in real life, but something, you know, we'll give him a long-term deal. Orazio Fantasia uh, used to play for the Bombers. Uh, so we're going to bring him back to the Bombers, hopefully. Uh, I know we said we've got too many forwards, but I'm going to move on from some of those forwards. So we're going to bring in Fantasia and Castagna. Uh, Castagna obviously plays for Richmond. Uh, I think he's 25 or 26. No, he's 27, so he's a little bit older as well. I'm um, going to be sort of, you know, maybe a three, four year deal for him. Uh, and that'll be a nice fit. Jade Gresham is our next option. Um, he's a bit younger again than Matt Crouch. So we might actually prioritize Jade Gresham over Matt Crouch. And then we had two players that were picked up in the mid-season draft in Sydney Stack and McDonald. Uh, these would be very, very cheap options and we'll see what we can get done. So I'm gonna have a tinker around with some of the contracts and I will come back uh, with some of the signings uh, that we do make if we sign anybody at all. So I will be back uh, very shortly. Okay, Ben Mackay has accepted a contract from us. Eight years, $570,000 a season. We're gonna be bringing him in to play as our fullback. We're going to be moving on a few of our other key defenders, such as Zerk Thatcher, who did move uh, on from the club in real life. He went to Port. Um, so he's going to be sort of the natural replacement uh, for him, even though Zerk Thatcher didn't play a game for us last year. Orazio Fantasia is going to be the next man that we sign up to be joining the new look bombers for 2024. Three years, $485,000 a season. Going to be very happy with his, uh, his crumbing skills and sort of his general uh, demeanor that he brings to the club. I'm very happy to uh, welcome him welcome him back to the club, I should say. We're also going to bring in Oscar McDonald, who has signed a three-year deal worth $90,000 a season. We've promoted him from a rookie-listed contract to a primary-list contract. Uh, we've taken him from Fremantle. He's still got room to grow, even though he's 27. Uh, just a nice backup, you know, should we get an injury in our key defensive positions. Jade Gresham is up next. We've signed him to a six-year, $530,000 a year contract. We needed more guys like him in our midfield. We're going to be doing a few exits, Dylan Shield being one of them. I know he's not a midfielder anymore, but Dyson Happel will be another one. So we just sort of need those sort of ball-carrying midfielders. We needed a few more. We're going to bring him into the club, and he's going to do a job for us in our engine room. Jason Castagna is up next. Five years, 535 a season. Very happy uh, with him coming into the club. 
you know, I probably could have done a four-year deal, but the five-year deal was slightly cheaper per season. And we can always move him on in a trade later down the line if he does regress. So welcome aboard, Jason Castagna. And that is going to do it for the initial free agency period. We've brought in a handful of players. We'll have a look at that now. We'll see what other moves have happened in free agency. Uh, we ended up bringing in five players, Mackay, Fantasia, McDonald, Gresham, and Castagna. Melican from Sydney has gone to the Bulldogs. Matt Flynn has gone from GWS to Hawthorne. Jack Silvani has crossed from Carlton to Melbourne. And then Himmelberg and Dude have gone from their respective clubs to the Gold Coast. So a very nice little recruiting period for the Gold Coast. I did look at Himmelberg. I decided against him in the end. Um, and do day I've already gotten in a couple of other, other videos, so I decided to give him a miss this time around. But there are certainly other uh, defensive players that we can bring into the club. We're now going to have a look at what pick we have in this year's draft. Uh, we've got a few picks. It says we've got 10. Looks like we have pick 16, which is a little higher than I thought it would be. Um, but obviously very... Probably looking to move up. We'll have a look at the draft pool. And I can see there's a few uh, sort of members of the draft. There's one, two, three, four, five, six players I can see on this initial screen that I'd probably like to bring in. I probably won't bring in all six, but I'll see what I can manufacture in the trade period. But we'll see who's an expiring contract now. I can see that Parrish is uh, an expiring contract. We're definitely looking to re-sign him. Snelling is out of contract. Heppel's out of contract. Jones, Brian, Mason Redman, Baldwin, Lord, Zerk Thatch. So there's a lot of players out of contract that we do need to consider. Um, but the first uh, act of business, I think, in this period is not actually going to be a trade. It's going to be re-signing Darcy Parrish. He was outstanding for us this past season. We're going to reward him, reward him with a six-year contract. We'll see what he is after. After 6.51 a season, we'll boost it to 6.55 because I like uh, round numbers. It's not really a round number, but I like dealing with ending a figure on a one just seems a bit funny. I like a five is a nice number. So we'll end it on that. We'll go $655,000 a season and he has signed a nice extension for us. Another player that we have to think about is Mason Redman. He is out of contract. He is an 89 overall. Um, so he is an important player to us. He is 26 years of age. So he's right in that same age bracket as Darcy Parrish. So we're probably going to be looking at six years for him as well. We'll see uh, what uh, he is after. He's after 800,000 a season. That's probably a little bit steep for me, but we will do it. Uh, as he is an important player to us. We'll bring him in. Well, I suppose welcome him back, I guess. Because he has, technically hasn't gone anywhere. But we assigned a brand new contract for another six years. All right, we've put this trade together with Port Adelaide. Zerk Thatcher did move to Port in real life. So we're going to be trying to move him there in game as well. We're also going to attach Brian to this deal. Uh, we're going to try and get pick 19, future first and second round pick, as well as pick 44 in this year's draft. I don't intend to use pick 19 and pick 44. I will be using them to trade for other players. Um, because I think in terms of players that we're going to be looking to draft, we're going to be trying to draft in that sort of top five, top 10 area. Um, so we're going to be either using those picks to move up in the draft or uh, using them to bring in another asset. Um, but this trade should get done. Uh, they're happy to accept. So a couple of players gone, a couple of players off the books, uh, creates a bit of salary relief for us. Uh, very happy with this deal. No, you are not mistaken. We have offered a contract to Harry Mackay, the twin brother of Ben Mackay. We're going to try and get one twin up each end of the field. We're going to be having Harry Mackay at full forward, Ben Mackay at full back. So we've offered him eight years, $860,000 a season. He is a very good forward. And I figured because Carlton finished uh, in last this past season, and uh, he might be a little bit unhappy there. So he'd be looking to, uh, to move over to a team that finished in the top eight. So that's my logic behind it. And I also think uh, there's one other piece of this deal uh, that I want to get done. I will show you guys in a second. Carlton also have the number one pick. So that is the other piece of this deal that I'm going to try and put together. I might actually do this as sort of like a live negotiation is sort of how I'm going to do this. Um, now, one of the problems that I did say about Essendon's list earlier is they've got too many small forwards. 
So going to be looking to try and palm off a few of them here. So I'm thinking someone like uh, Gilfi might be the way to go if I'm saying his name correctly. We've got Owen Davy Jr. and I can't think of his name. We might keep those two younger players around for now as they're fairly cheap. But in terms of uh, a player like Hobbs, for example, um, we could probably look to move on. So we might actually put Hobbs in the deal. We'll put Gilfi in the deal as well. We'll see what they say about this. They're insulted by the deal. What if we put in... I don't really want to trade Tip and Woody to Carlton. So I know Essendon fans really like Tip and Woody. So we might keep him. Archie Perkins is a player I didn't really give a lot of game time last year. Definitely going to give him some more game time in this next season. So definitely going to keep him. I know Snelling's out of contract. So we might throw Snelling in the deal. Let's see what they say about this. And they say it's extremely fair. So Harry Mackay is now a member of the Essendon Football Club along with his twin. Very happy with this deal. Okay, this deal is essentially a salary dump. We're going to be sending Dylan Shiel, uh, who is a little bit on the older side of things. He's making about $500,000, $550,000 a season. Uh, we're going to be sending him to the Gold Coast. My logic is they're going to be making, looking to make a push for the finals. We're going to be sending him over to the Gold Coast, as I said, for uh, pick five, pick 27, and two future picks. Hopefully they will accept this deal. And they're insulted by it, uh, unfortunately. What if we take out the future second and the second round pick and we just do pick five and the future first round pick? They say that's a little bit under par. So this is where we get uh, a little bit creative with the picks that we do have that we've traded for. Let's add in pick 44 into that deal. They say it's extremely fair. So Dylan Shield is now gone. That's money we don't have to worry about. Very happy that we don't have to deal with it anymore. Let's uh, make some more deals. We're now gonna be putting a deal together for one of my favorite players, Darcy Fogarty from the Adelaide Crows. Uh, we've, we've offered him seven years, $710,000 a season. We're gonna be upgrading our center half forward position now, as I don't really like the current sort of players that we have there. So we're gonna be sort of sending some players to the Crows. They do also have a couple of draft picks that I do like. So we're gonna be trying to getting a few of those off of their hands as well. We'll see what we can do. Okay, this is the deal that I have proposed. We're gonna be sending Jones, Wiedemann, and Two Meter Peter to the Crows in exchange for Darcy Fogarty, pick eight, nine, and 31 in this year's draft. Hopefully they do accept, if I'm not asking for too much, they're extremely pleased, which is nice. So uh, a few other salaries off the books, uh, as we did bring in a lot of free agents this past year, and uh, we've brought in Darcy Fogarty, who is going to be awesome for us. I can already feel it. I wouldn't normally do a, a deal with such a rival club as Essendon and Hawthorne, but Will Day is the exact kind of player that we do need. We're going to be trying to bring him over via trade. Hawthorne also have the number four pick in the draft as well. So we're going to be trying to do some sort of dark arts magic trading <laughs> with uh, some of the other draft picks that we do have. Okay, we're going to be sending Dyson Heppel, uh, Alastair Lord and Nick Hind to the Hawks in exchange for pick four, Will Day, and two future picks. I think this deal does represent fair value. We'll see what the Hawks think. They're insulted by the deal. Um, a little bit unfortunate that, but we'll take out the future first. We'll keep the future second in there. We'll see what they have to say. They say that's not quite right either. What if we throw in pick 19, which I think we got, I don't remember who we got that from, but we're throwing pick 19, see what we can do. And they say it's a fair deal. So Will Day is now a member of the Essendon Football Club, and we also have traded up in the draft quite nicely there. Okay, this is a fairly simple deal. We're just gonna be trying to trade up for the number three overall pick with North Melbourne. We're gonna be sending pick 16, pick 31, McBride and Menzi in exchange for pick three and a future first round pick. We'll see what they have to say. They say it's extremely fair. We're gonna be doing a very similar deal with the Fremantle Dockers. We're gonna be sending pick nine, Voss, Mankara and Montgomery off to Frio for pick two and two future first round picks. Sorry, a future first and future second. Let's see what they have to say. They're insulted by the deal. Let's take out the future, that's our picks. Let's take out the future second round pick, see what they have to say about that. 
what if we swap around the first and the second? So it's pick two, future second round pick, they accept that deal. Okay, this is a very similar deal to the last couple that we've done. We're doing it with West Coast this time around. It's pick eight for De D'Ambrosio, is that how you say his name? And Baldwin in exchange for pick six and pick 28 in this year's draft. Let's see what they have to say. They're ecstatic with the deal. We probably could have gotten a little bit more, but you know what, that's okay. With all those deals done, you can now see that we have accumulated the top six picks in this year's draft. Uh, we're going to stop the uh, trading and free agency uh, period now. I feel like we've constructed a fairly good roster. But we've got a lot of drafting to do. We've got about $600,000 left in cap room. Uh, I expect that to you know, come into play once we've signed all of our players. So hopefully I've allowed enough money there. The players we will be targeting this year is Melbourne, Brian, Muir, Simmons, Winzel, and Hill down the bottom here. So those are the players that we will be taking with our first six picks. The other draft picks that we do have, um, we'll just see what happens. But let's move on. Trade period is done. Free agency is done. We've been proposed a trade offer. We'll see what uh, the trade offer is. It's from the Gold Coast. They want Nick Martin and pick 40 in exchange for a future first round pick and pick 51. What's Nick Martin's uh, salary situation? Let's have a look. He's on $450,000 a season. You know, I think we're actually gonna do this deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna counter offer. We are going to counter offer and try and squeeze a little bit more out of the Gold Coast. I would like a future second and third round pick and I will give you pick 28 in this year's draft as well. So we'll see what they say about this. They say it's fair. Okay, Nick Martin is now gone. We've got plenty of room in the cap. We will obviously got a lot of players coming off the books next year. Let's get into the draft. The draft is now here. We'll be taking uh, Melbourne with the first pick. Here's a key forward, 75 overall, 90 to 99 potential. He looks to be a very good prospect for us. Next up is Jace Muir, sort of halfback flanker, 75 overall, 93 to 99 potential. Uh, I'm sort of expecting him to fill the Dyson Heppel uh, role in our half back line, so he's going to be very good for us in the future as well. Third overall, we're going to be taking Lewis Bryant, who's a small forward, 175 centimetres tall, 91 to 99 potential. Um, he's probably going to replace McDonald, Tip, and Woody. I did delist him at the end of the season because he was asking for about $500,000, and I thought that is unreasonable. Uh, he's 30 now, and I don't really want to give a multi-year contract to him. So uh, we're going to bring in Lewis Bryan instead, who can probably do a similar job. Next up, we've got Cooper Simmons, a player who shares a name with me. My last name isn't Simmons, but my first name is Cooper. 74 overall, 91 to 99 potential. He is going to be a midfield machine for us. Hopefully, I mean, I hope you can. That would be nice, but we're going to draft him, see what happens. With the fifth pick, we're going to be taking Winzel. Uh, what's his first name? I don't know what his first name is. Let's have a look. Alejandro Wins. That's a fantastic name. Uh, we're going to be bringing him into the team. Crumming Ford, 72 overall, uh, 91 to 99 potential. He is going to be fantastic. Let's get him in the team. And with our final pick, we're going to be taking a key defender. We're going to be taking Jack Hill, 92 to 99 potential. Just a 71 overall, but he is going to be a key player for us in the future. After our first six picks we didn't have a pick again until like the the 50s and I saw that Mitt, Matt Crouch is actually here so we're going to take Matt Crouch he was one of our free agency targets that we didn't actually end up going for but we're going to take him with the 50th ish overall pick welcome aboard Matt Crouch Malcolm Roses is going to be our next pick 85 to 95 potential only 22 years old and an 85 overall he is going to be a fantastic addition to this bomber squad and with our final pick of the national draft, we're going to be taking the ever-reliable Toby Murray, a backup Ruckman who's just going to sit on the bench and do a job for us. Uh, hopefully we don't need to rely on him too much. Ash Johnson is going to be the first pick of the rookie draft. 83 overall, he's a key forward. He's going to do a job for us in that forward half. 83 to 90 potential. I don't really see him reaching the back end of that potential as he already is a little bit older. But we're going to bring, be bringing him in. Hopefully he can do something decent. Jake Stain is going to be our next pick from the Gold Coast. 80 overall, 80 to 84 potential. He's 29 years old, so a little bit older. 
but as I said, very reliable. He's going to be great. I'm going to be taking McPherson with this next pick. He's just a sort of a half back, back pocket kind of player. 24 years old, 80 overall. It's going to be decent. I don't expect him to start too many games, but we'll see what he can what he can come up with. And lastly, uh, we're going to take Nikai Cocker too with our final pick. 80 overall. Uh, always seems to be available in these rookie drafts. I don't know why. He's just one of those players that can't get on an AFL list uh, the further we get into a career mode. So we're going to be taking him with the final pick. Okay, the draft is done. It is time to assign some uh, Guernsey numbers. Uh, as always, as you probably expect, I am going to do this myself. It is a lengthy process for me. Uh, I don't know why it is. It just is. I find it hard to explain, but I don't know what it is. But I'm very happy with the recruiting we've done uh, this off season. It'll be very exciting to see what the Bombers can come up with in the next season. I think if we can finish in the top eight, we can then build off what we can, what we've already got and then we'll see what we can do in the season after that. So I'm gonna do these going to numbers and then we'll get into preseason very shortly. Okay, we've got our first preseason game up against Geelong and this is the best team that I could come up with. I think it's a pretty solid team on paper. We have got Jake Kelly in the back pocket. We've got Ben McKay at fullback, Will Day in the other back pocket with Andrew McGrath and Mason Redmond as our halfbacks. We've got Jaden Laverde as our center halfback. We've got Jade Gresham on the wing. Jai Caldwell in the center position. Cooper Simmons, one of our draftees on the other wing. Darcy Parrish and Zach Merritt as our Rovers. Sam Draper as our Ruck. Malcolm Roses and uh, Archie Perkins at half forward. Darcy Fogarty at center half forward. Jake Stringer in the forward pocket. Harry Mackay at full forward. Orazio Fantasia in the other forward pocket. We've got Melbourne, Langford, Cox, McPherson and Sardis on the bench. We've got a few other players that probably could make the starting, you know, 23, but we decide to move against that. We'll probably bring in some of the younger players as we further go into the season. There's going to be a few injuries, I assume. So that's when we'll incorporate some of the younger guys. I would normally do it a little bit earlier, but I feel like we're not as top heavy um, in terms of our really, really good players being superstars of the competition. We've sort of created a, a more of a depth within this list. There's definitely a deeper list, I think, uh, compared to other rebuilds that I've done. So I'm very happy with, with what we've got. We're gonna play this uh, first game up against Geelong. We'll see how we go. We do lose in the end. Geelong are a good side, so it's nothing to worry about too much. We do have the Swans in round one. Hopefully we can get a decent win. We have one injury. It is McPherson. Who are we gonna bring in? Might bring in Jason Castagna. He can sit on the bench. We're gonna have another Ford on the bench. I do like that. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I know he doesn't play the same position as the uh, guy we just took out, but that is okay. Round one against the Swans. Let's see how we go. It is a massive loss. Oh my lord, 69 points. We get absolutely battered. Um, not good. Not good at all. I will uh, catch up with you guys at the uh, the midseason draft. Okay, we have reached the uh, mid-season point. We're currently 11 games into the year, seven wins, four losses. Fairly happy with how we've gone. We lost the first two games of the season, then we went on the five-game win streak, then we lost two in a row, and then we've won our last two. That's basically how we got to this point in time. Uh, Gold Coast, surprisingly, doing very well at the top of the ladder. Uh, at the time of recording, they've won their first two games of the season in real life which I'm very happy about as a Gold Coast fan. We almost lost to the Crows um, after we dominated the first three quarters. So anyway, that's a side issue. But I'm very happy with how we've actually gone so far this this match, um, this match, this season. If we have a look at the statistics now, you can see that Darcy Fogarty is leading the goal kicking with 15 goals. Nick Cox has got 12, as does Roses and Fantasia. Mackay has just gotten injured. He's got 11 uh, goals up front. Archie Perkins also has 11 and Jake Stringer has 10. If we look at the major ball winners, you can see that Castagna is leading the way with 489 disposals. Uh, Kyle Langford's got 429. Melbourne on the wing uh, has 421. Darcy Parrish has missed a couple of games. He's got 412. And then we've got a couple of other guys over 400 as well. Marks is uh, Castagna and Merritt with over 50 each. Tackles, we've got five guys with over 20 tackles, which is a lot in the simulation. It obviously isn't a lot in real life. And for clearances, we've got Castagna leading the way with 17 clearances. In terms of hit outs, we've got Sam Draper, who's done the majority of the work 
uh, so far this year. Uh, ben Mackay has been sort of the backup ruck. I don't really, I haven't been playing with a backup ruckman, but he's there. Uh, but Sam Draper, as I said, has been doing majority of the work. In terms of goal kicking accuracy, we could definitely be doing a little bit better. Kyle Langford's kicked nine goals, 21. Jai Caldwell's kicked nine goals, 13. Castagna's seven goals, 12. Melbourne's seven goals, 11. So there is room for improvement, but it hasn't affected our sort of win-loss you know, ratio so far. We're still winning the majority of our games, but it is something just to keep an eye on for the future. In terms of score assists, Malcolm Roses is leading the way with 15. Castagna's got 13. Stringer's got 12. Perkins and Langford are also in double digits. If we have a look at the mid-season draft, it doesn't look like we actually hold any picks, but I'd be very interest, interested to see who gets picked this year. So Tom Jonas was the first pick. He uh, was pick uh, number one, 89 overall. Ryan Lester, I believe he used to play for Brisbane, or at least does play for Brisbane. He's He's gone, he's gone back to Brisbane, it's the point I'm trying to make. Zach Tui's gone to Hawthorne. Jeremy McGovern has gone to the Bulldogs. Sam Day's been picked up by Geelong. Michael Hibbard uh, has been picked up by Port Adelaide. Travis Boak has gone to Melbourne, which I don't know how I feel about that. And Rory Sloan has gone to Richmond. So that's just a few of the picks that we uh, are gonna have a look at today. Anybody else that's really major? Flanders being let go by Gold Coast is interesting. He's got quite a bit of potential in game. He's off to Geelong. And I would say that's all McDonald's McDonald and Woody's ended up in Brisbane. So he's found a home, which is good. Very happy about that. Uh, but apart from that, nobody else got picked. We now have the Dreamtime match at the MCG. We're going up against Richmond, who are currently in eighth position. Uh, we've got to put a team together. It looks like Darcy Parrish does have an injury. So the natural replacement has been Matt Crouch for whenever we've had a midfield injury. And in terms of who is going to come in, we might bring in Setterfield. He is done okay so far this year uh, but I've been very happy with uh, some of the players that we've uh, brought into the first team there's been a few injuries from time to time and we seem to be doing okay dream time at the G is a special time of year let's try and get a win we get absolutely battered by Richmond which is not ideal not not great not great at all uh, let's Let's try and move on from that. We might actually do one more game. Try and get a win before the end of the year. Let's uh, take Jai Caldwell out. Looks like he's picked up a injury. Sam Durham. No, I'm not really feeling it. Do we have another midfielder? Jade Gresham can come back. Perfect. Harry Mackay is also back. So he's going to come in for Melbourne. I think that is a nice pickup. Actually, we'll take Brian out of the bench. We'll put Mackay at full forward. Melbourne can go back to the bench. And Ridley is also back. He wasn't in the round one team, I don't think. I think Laverde was, but we'll take Laverde out. We'll put uh, Ridley at full uh, at centre half back, sorry. And then we'll confirm this team. We've got Carlton at the MCG. It appears to be a night game, so we should be a fair chance here. Oh, we've actually got a few less injuries now, so we must have had the bye. Darcy Parrish is back. We'll take uh, Setterfield out. Crouch can go to the bench. Parrish go, can go back to Rover. Jai Caldwell is also back. I think Jai Caldwell is going to sit out for now. Who are some of the other players that have been injured? Jake Kelly is another one that has been injured. We're going to bring him in for McPherson, who could just sit in the back pocket, do a job for us. But we're sort of coming back to full strength now, which is good. Got Carlton at the G. Hopefully we can come away with a win here. It's another loss, unfortunately, so we're probably going to be out of the eight now. Uh, if we have a quick look at the ladder. Yes, we're just out of the eight on percentage, so I'm going to take us through to the end of the season. Hopefully, we can finish in the top eight, and then we will go from there. Okay, the end of the regular season is done. We ended up finishing in seventh. We were fourth going into round 24, but a loss. It was quite a heavy loss as ended up ended us up. In seventh, we got batted by about 80 points. So it was really, really bad. So we've got Richmond in a elimination final at the MCG away from home. I'm hopeful that we can do semi-okay. We've had a few injuries towards the back end of the season, um, but we'll be very interested to see how we go. Okay, going to select the team now. We're gonna take Lewis Bryan out of the lineup as he currently has injury. Will Day will come back in. He can come in for Laverde. Laverde can go to the bench. Let's have a look 
who else is injured? Will Langford, I'm sorry, not Will Langford, Kyle Langford is back. Might take him out or bring him in for Roses is what we'll do there. I think that's gonna do it. So we're gonna keep everything pretty similar to how it's been played out all season. I like how the team has been playing um, and this is what we're gonna go with. So let's go elimination final, win or go home up against Richmond. Can we steal one here? No, we can't. So we're out in the first round in the finals, which is about where I was aiming for, I will be honest. Um, but that's okay. Early finals exit um, which is, is, is probably about fair. Annoying that we didn't get the double chances. We definitely were in a position to get it. Um, but that is something, you know, we can't really help now. Uh, but let's have a look, see how the rest of the finals played out. If we go to fixtures, looks like Fremantle win the premiership. So they get their first flag. Something that we haven't done just yet. So that will be a very interesting one to take over one day. Uh, so we'll worry about that, you know, obviously another day. But uh, if we go to statistics now, these are the final stats for um, our players this season. We had a lot of uh, players with over 20 goals this year. Archie Perkins leading the way with 31. Harry Mackay kicked 27 in his first campaign. Jakey Stringer kicked 26. Fantasia, Cox, and Fogarty each kicked 25, and Drake Gresham kicked 23. Major ball winners was Castagna. He got just a tick over a thousand disposals. Zach Merritt led the way with marks. Darcy Parrish led the way with tackles. Clearances was Castagna, and then hit outs would be Sam Draper. He did a very good job. Only missed the one game this year, uh, where we had Toby Murray Curry come in and play play one game. So that was very funny. Um, and if we have a look at, uh, in terms of accuracy, see how we were towards the back end of the year. As you can see, as you can see, still quite inaccurate with, you know, Langford, Castagna, Melbourne, Crouch and Draper, each kicking more points than goals, even Setterfield down here, six goals, 15. So that is something, you know, if we kick a little bit straighter next season, we are probably gonna be a bit of a better team, but there, there's a lot of work to do still, I think, and we probably need to shore up a few more defensive positions. I think our midfield's pretty good, um, but I also think our forward line, mainly our pockets, need to be touched up a little bit as well. We've got our key forwards in Fogarty and Mackay. I think they can, you know, they're going to be pretty strong. But those sort of forward, those forward pocket roles, like your stringers, are getting older. We brought in Castagna last year. He did a pretty good job. Fantasia, he did a good job as well. But we probably need a few more of those types to come in and really push us forward to the next level. So that's that's what I'm gonna be aiming for. Uh, Sam Walsh looks like he won the brown load this year. I can't see any Essendon players in the top uh, brown low medal uh, list uh, in terms of polls. Uh, but these have, this is the breakdown of the votes to see who got what votes. Parrish led the way for us with 14. Zach Merritt picked up 12 and uh, Melbourne got six. So very happy in his first year to get some votes. Uh, Jesse Hogan won the Coleman, and looks like Jones from Collingwood led the uh, the Rising Star Award. Melbourne got one vote in that uh, for this past season. And in terms of the All-Australian team, Melbourne made it as a key forward. Laverde made it as a key defender, and I don't think I can see any other Bombers that made it. Okay, we've had a look at the free agents uh, for this next season, and none of them really jumped out at me, so we're probably gonna do most of our work in the trade market. In terms of the draft, the second season is always the worst season. Can't really see too much talent in terms of potential here. So we're probably going to stay away from the draft, trade away most of our draft picks and really focus on uh, looking at players, bringing them in via trade. We do have a few uncontracted players that we do need to keep an eye on, uh, such as Andy McGrath, who uh, did actually miss a bit of time last year through injury. Um, but let's, what's our cap situation at the moment? Oh, we've got plenty of room. Um, we've got just a touch under $4 million to spend. So, but Andy McGrath is gonna be someone that we're gonna look into be bringing back. Uh, let's just offer him a three year deal. Wants $735,000 a season. That is okay. Uh, let's sign him back up. Um, but yes, we're looking at, you know, these kind of players to shore up the defense. And we're gonna be looking to bring in some more forwards as well. Cause I think our midfield's pretty good. Andy McGrath has signed a new contract, which is fantastic. Archie Perkins has also signed a new deal, $625,000 a season for three years. 
Uh, he was probably one of our best small forwards last year, so we've been trying to bring in more players like him, you know, good players with high potential, with room to grow over the coming seasons, because I think he is going to be a real uh, pillar of our forward line in years to come. But we, as I said, we're going to be looking to bring in more players just like him. We've re-signed Lewis Hayes on a three-year, $300,000 a year contract. Uh, he's probably not the best player at the moment, but he's got that 90 to 97 overall potential. He is going to grow into being a fantastic player for us in the future. I just want to lock him away for the next three years. Last player that we're going to re-sign for the, you know, this little period of time is going to be Ash Johnson. We've signed him for three years, $90,000 a season. We've upgraded him from the rookie list to the primary list. Uh, he's more than happy to just play a reserve role for us, so I'm very happy just to have him on board for that particular role. Our first trade target is going to be Cam Rayner from the Brisbane Lions. We've offered him three years, $905,000 a season. He's got a little bit of room to grow still. Former number one draft pick, I think he's going to be an excellent addition to our forward line. Our first offer is going to be Jake Stringer and pick 11 in this year's draft. Jake Stringer is currently out of contract and he is a bit of an older player, so I'm going to be looking to move him along. The addition of that uh, number 11 pick overall just is a bit of an enticing factor for the Brisbane Lions to give up Cam Rayner. Hopefully this deal will go through. They're ecstatic with the proposal. That is okay. As I said, I'm not going to be looking to be using these picks this season. I'm going to be moving them on uh, for assets such as Cam Rayner, but I feel like we've definitely upgraded um, in that forward line position now. Our next target in the trade market is going to be Shea Bolton from the Richmond Football Club. We've offered him six years, $975,000 a season. Just a very, just one of those creative players that every, every forward line needs one of these players. You know, he's not going to kick a bag of five every game, but sort of every now and then he's going to provide this little spark of inspiration. And he's just one of those just really electric players so we're going to be looking to bring him into the team hopefully he can make a difference next season we're going to be trading uh wanganine david jr and uh i can't remember the last davy's name i'm sorry but i know it's all when davy jr oh, it starts with the j i know what it is but we're going to be sending them all to the richmond football club along with uh the number one number 10 pick uh in this year's draft hopefully they accept this deal and they are also ecstatic ecstatic with the deal so welcome aboard Shea Bolton okay this deal with the Hawks we're just going to be moving on two players that are a little bit older that we're just going to be moving them on we don't necessarily need them anymore clear up a bit of cap space we're going to be sending Jake Kelly and Stewart uh, off to the Hawks in exchange for a first round second round and third round pick for next season hopefully they accept this deal and they're insulted by the proposal, which is a little bit funny. Let's take out the... Actually, let's not take out the draft picks. Let's throw in another player that we're not, probably not going to use next season. I don't really see Reed um, fitting into the club. We've already got a lot of other key defenders that I do like. So let's throw Reed into the steal. Hopefully they accept it and they say it's extremely fair. So let's uh, welcome those draft picks in for next season. We've sent out a few players. Hopefully that clears up for a little bit of cap space. This deal with Paul is going to be a very basic pick swap. We're going to be sending picks 9, 37, and 48 in this year's draft in exchange for a future first, second, and third round pick for next year. Hopefully they accept this deal and they say it's a fair deal as well. We're going to be doing a few more deals like this, so buckle in and have a look. Another pick swap with the Crows this time, uh, 20, 28, and 29 in exchange for a future first and a future third round pick. Hopefully they accept this deal and they're very happy with it. Last pick swap deal, we're going to be sending pick 30 and 46 and a future third round pick in exchange for a future first round pick from the Western Bulldogs. Hopefully they accept, they say we're a little bit under par. What if we add another future third round pick? They say it's extremely fair. Let's get into the draft now. Hopefully we can uh, pick up some decent uh, mature age talent. Our first pick in the national draft this year, we're going to be taking another small four. We're going to be taking Coleman from, uh, well, I'm not sure if he's still from the Gold Coast, but he used to play for the Gold Coast. So we're going to be uh, taking him with our first pick. Our next pick, we're going to be taking a defender. Let's take Madden, uh, who's an 84 overall, 84 to 88 potential. He's 25. He's going to fit in nicely as probably a backup in that position. 
With our next pick, we're going to be taking Luke Dunstan, 84 overall, 84 to 88 potential. He's probably going to be a backup midfielder for us. We just need a few of these kind of players to uh, bulk out the back end of our roster, and I think he's going to be a good fit. Our next pick will be key defender Miller, 83 overall, 83 to 90 potential. He's 25 years old. He's a spoiling defender. He's got experience. I think he's going to be a good fit. Every team needs a good backup Ruckman today. We're going to be taking Jordan Sweet, 78 overall, uh, 26 year old, year old. He's currently spending his time out at Glenelg uh, in the SANFL. So I think he's going to be a good fit for us and uh, we'll probably replace Toby Murray as our backup Ruckman. I was surprised that he's actually still here. We're going to be taking Kajitsky, uh, 83 overall, 83 to 91 potential, just a key forward who is going to be a nice backup for uh, Harry Mackay up in the forward line. And uh, if Darcy Fogarty ever gets an injury as well, he's going to be a nice backup. We're going to be taking another small forward here. We're going to be taking Banfield, who's an 84 overall, 84 to 88 potential. He's 26 years of age. We're just going to be adding him to this list of small forwards that we have. Um, just really upgrading that position as the season goes on. And with the final pick of the draft, we're going to be taking Joel Hamling, 83 overall, 31 years of age. He is a little bit older, but we need an experienced head in that back half. And I think he is going to be... Uh, just, you know, if the worst thing ever happens, we need just someone who can hold down the back line, and I think he can do that for us. We're going to be taking another defender with our first pick in the rookie draft. We're going to be taking Bramble, who's an 82 overall, 82 to 20, uh, 82 to 26, 82 to 86 uh, overall potential. Again, just a backup option. Uh, we're not really drafting the best of best players ever in, uh, in this rookie draft, but he's just a nice backup player. Our next pick is going to be uh, Matheson, who I think used to play for Brisbane. Uh, 81 to 85 potential overall. He's currently an 81 overall, 27 years of age. Again, just another backup player. He's going to fit in nicely in our uh, midfield. Hopefully he can do a decent job for us one day if there's ever, new, ever an injury. We're going to be taking Lane here. He used to play for Brisbane. He's a 76 overall, just a nice backup Ruckman. Very tall, does a job for us, uh, and hopefully we won't ever need to use him. And with our last pick, uh, we're going to be taking Burgess, who's an 81 overall, 81 to 85 uh, potential overall, key forward, who's uh, currently playing his trade at the Adelaide Crows, used to play for the Gold Coast Suns, so we're going to be adding him to uh, our list now. Okay, preseason is here. This is the team we're going to go with uh, for this year. I can see that we do have a few injuries, so we're just going to tinker around with that a little bit. Uh, I think everything's all good now. So we got Andy McGrath and Will Day in our back pockets, Laverde and Ridley as our key defenders. James Madden, who is currently filling in for Mason Redmond on that halfback flank. Jace Muir is going to be the other halfback flank. Matt Crouch is going to be on one wing with Jade Gresham and Cooper Simmons on the other. Sam Draper is going to be our Ruckman as uh, per usual with Zach Merritt Parrish as our Rovers. Shea Bolton is on one half forward flank. Archie Perkins is on the other with Cam Rayner and Kyle Langford filling in the pockets. Darcy Fogarty is our center half forward with Harry Mackay at full forward. Uh, our backup ruckman is actually going to be Ben Mackay this year. Uh, I've decided he did a good job of that last season, so we're going to give him uh, some time off the bench this year. Jason Castagna um, is going to be uh, on our bench along with Lewis Bryan, Luke Dunstan, and George Melbourne uh, as the sub, if I can find him. Orazio Fantasia is down to a 73 overall. Now, I was thinking about trading him during the trade period just to uh, relieve some salary, um, but I thought, no, I'll keep him around. He was good last year, and now he's terrible. So uh, we're gonna be moving on from Fantasia uh, at some point uh, in the next season or so. That now brings us to uh, our preseason match up against North Melbourne. I'm hopeful that we can get off to a good start. And it's a draw. I don't know how I feel about that. Weird. Archie Perkins picked up an injury in that match. We're going to bring in Jason Castagna to play on that half forward flank. And we'll bring in uh, Nick Holman to play uh, on the bench in place for Perkins. Round one is up against the Crows at the Adelaide Oval. Always a tough match uh, going away to the Adelaide Oval. Hopefully we can pick up the win, which we do. A very close contest. We win by six points in the end. Very happy with our work. Let's meet up again at the mid-season point. Uh, I will be back very shortly. Okay, we've reached the halfway point of the season, and if there's one word I could use to describe the uh, state of affairs at the moment, it is 
Injuries. We have been hit with injuries. So many injuries so far this season. But we're currently 6 and 5. Uh, we've been as low as 15th, but we've also been as high as 2nd. So uh, take that what you will. Um, but I've been considering the amount of adjustments that we've had to make uh, due to injuries so far this season. I've been pretty happy with uh, the output that we've had. In terms of uh, leading goal kickers, that goes to Darcy Parrish, uh, Langford and Fogarty. Uh, Darcy Parrish is leading the way with the most touches as well. He's also got the most marks. He's uh, up there for tackles as well. Clearances is uh, Ben Mackay of all people, uh, funnily enough. And hit outs goes to Sam Draper as well. In terms of goal kicking accuracy, we are still kicking inaccurately, which is probably costing us in a few games, unfortunately. Um, but we're still kicking a lot of goals. Um, we're just not you know, returning those results into wins. Our defense has been a little bit leaky at times, uh, which has been not ideal. Uh, we're getting lots of score assists, which has also been great. You know, we should mention that. You know, it's really, really positive that we're getting those results. But we've got the mid-season draft. Hopefully, we can bring uh, somebody in. We've got, we're eligible to bring in four, four players, which is great. So I'm just going to be looking to take the best players available. Uh, Jai Clark is one of the players I want to bring in. Actually, Sardis is here. We we did delist Sardis last year. I was like, I'm not really going to play him. He's 75 overall. We're going to be trying to bring in Jai Clark uh, instead. So we're going to uh, pick him uh, initially. And if Sartis is still there, I will bring him back. Um, I just doubt he's going to be there. He is still there, funnily enough. So we'll bring him in as well. I'm also going to be going to be looking in to bring in another defender. And I think Jace Burgoyne from used to play for Port Adelaide is going to be a good fit for us. Uh, we do have a, a long-term injury to Mason Redman. So he's going to fill in that role for us at the moment. And finally, I think we should take Bins. Uh, he's 83 overall, 84 to 92 potential. He's a, I don't know which club that is in the uh, in the VFL, but I think he's going to be a solid fit for us. And hopefully he can uh, do something decent uh, when he plays. Okay, that is the mid-season draft done. I'm going to be bringing in Jace Burgoyne straight away. He can come into the bench. Uh, we've been having, uh, is it Liam Hayes playing in the back pocket? Uh, even though he's, he's Lewis Hayes, sorry. Liam Hayes, uh, Lewis Hayes playing in the back pocket as he is a key defender and we don't really have that many defensive options uh, just due to injuries. Madden is also back, so we might actually bring Madden in instead of Burgoyne now that he is back. Uh, but as you can see, we've got nine injuries. We had as many as 12 at one point, so it has not been fantastic uh, for... <laughs> for our forward line and our back line, uh, especially. We're gonna bring in uh, Langford for Roses. We'll see who else is here. Fantasia is all the way down to a 68 as well. So just something to keep an eye on. And Jai Clark, we'll just leave him there for now. We've got uh, Brisbane Lions at Marvel Stadium. Brisbane are dead last on the ladder. Hopefully we can beat them at home. We should be able to. And we get absolutely demolished by 66. I do not understand that whatsoever. But yeah, this is a tricky rebuild, guys. Uh, let's let's finish off the season strong, hopefully. Okay, we have finished the season in fourth with a hot run of form. We are playing Melbourne away at the first qualifying final. We get the double chance, which is all important. I'm very happy with the way we've finished the season. We've still got a few injuries to our name. Well, actually, we won't look at the statistics just yet. We'll have a look at uh, the qualifying final as we need to do that. We currently only have the four injuries, which is good, but we are not at full strength, unfortunately. We are, we are getting close to full strength, but as you can see, we do have uh, injuries to quite a few of our key players. I'm going to bring, bring in Madden for uh, Langford. We'll just see who else is available. Cooper Simmons is back. I'm going to be bringing him in for Bins, and Muir is also back. We'll bring him in for Burgoyne. He can sit in that back pocket for us. Hopefully we can get the win over Melbourne. Melbourne have been very dominant this season, but we'll see how we go. Hopefully we can do something decent. We get the victory. Very, very good. Essendon win by 27 points. And we move on to the preliminary final. We have the week off, which is good. Hopefully we can rest and recuperate, relieve ourselves of a few of our injuries. We have West Coast who finish in third. This will be very interesting. We have... One less injury, which is good. Cam Rayner is back. We'll bring him in for Holman. Roses can then go to the bench. I like where this is headed. Okay, we're starting to pick up a bit of momentum now. West Coast, Essendon, we got the home advantage. We're at the MCG. Can we win? 
We're in the granny. Okay, here we go. We won six in a row. We're currently two for two for grand finals so far. I don't want to jinx it. We have Melbourne, who we beat in the qualifying final. Do we have any injuries? We have no further injuries. I think Crouch and Bolton are still out long term, as is Lankford. So we'll leave those for now. We'll go unchanged into the granny. I don't feel confident about this at all, but I like where we're headed. Can we win? Three for three, guys, on our rebuild so far. We are yet to lose a grand final. Just literally as I'm recording this, we've received a request for our next rebuild from what have been more perfect, Jack. I've just finished recording uh, episode number three of this series. So he has requested that we do this club next. And we are going to be doing the Sydney Swans next as part of this rebuild, we'll take the Swans music out now. Um, as you know, we've got to promote the Essendon uh, stuff for a little bit longer, I think. We've got to celebrate that we just won a premiership. So we'll have a look at the Brownlow medal votes. Uh, Jacob Hopper, 24 Brownlow medal votes. He ends up as the winner. Dunstan was in uh, in second, equal second with Caleb Sarong. So very happy with his output. We'll have a quick look at the uh, the Bombers' output now. Uh, Luke Dunstan, uh, Darcy Parrish, Zach Merritt were the leading vote getters. Uh, very happy with our work. We did a pretty good job of sharing the uh, votes around in that, in that middle portion. Isaac Rankin wins the Coleman. Not a bomber in sight. Um, I would say that we're probably surprise premiers. We won the final six games, seven games of the season uh, to get there, but you know, I'm very happy with uh, how the end of the season has played out. And uh, MacArthur wins the uh, Rising Star Award for the Richmond Footy Club. In terms of all Australians, Nick Holman made it as a forward, uh, Lukey Dunson made it as a midfielder, Hill and Mackay made it as key defenders. So very, very happy with our work. But our job is done. Very happy with this, uh, this result. We should have a quick look at the statistics before I forget. You know, this is a little bit silly of me. Let's go back to the uh, the Essendon side of things. And see that the Fog man, Darcy Fogarty, led the goal kicking with 32 goals. Parrish and Mackay kicked 30 apiece. Uh, but we were just decimated by injuries, so nobody really comp uh, played consistent footy this season. But as long as you can put the best field on at the end of the season, that's really the only thing that matters. Darcy Parrish led the way with the disposals. Luke Dunstan was in second. Sorry why he got a lot of Brownlow medal votes. We had three guys tied on 109 marks at the uh, top of the list. Uh, Merritt, Dunstan and Mackay. Tackles is uh, Merritt, Dunstan and Parrish. Clearances is Parrish, Dunstan and Mackay. Kicks, handballs are the major ball winners. Draper and Mackay lead the ruck. Uh, battle. And if we look at the accuracy, I'm pretty sure this would still be in the negative. It is very much in the negative. So even though we didn't kick straight all season, we still won the Premiership. So um, I suppose maybe it was our defense that did the uh, the best work there. Score assists were very good. Multiple guys over 20. You know, I think we had about seven or eight guys there. So very happy with our work. We move on. Jack Cronin has spoken. Swans are next. My brother will be very happy. He's a Swan supporter. So, Sydney Swans, you're up next. Thank you for watching, guys, up until this point. If you did enjoy the video and enjoying the series, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll put a little magical button on the screen for you to find as we're trying to hit uh, 500 subscribers uh, by the end of June and 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I would like to be able to monetize my content. That is the dream. And that are the benchmarks that we need to get there. So help my dreams come true by leaving a subscribe and watching all of the videos also helps. Um, but until next time, guys, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you for the next rebuild. Bye.